She's a one-woman export industry. Katerina Angelaki Rook's poems have been translated and sold around the world, turning her into a national brand, part of the Greek landscape. And Greece is so proud of her, this year it awarded her its National Poetry Prize. There's only one problem. She won't be receiving the $7,000 that come with it, because the culture ministry is cash-strapped. At her house on the island of Aegina near Athens, she says she's used to being poor. Why poetry is so much flourishing lately? It's because uh, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost, uh, the poets are not paid. If they are lucky, they'll be uh, published in a magazine. They don't get anything, of course. So it, they, you can organize evenings, doesn't cost anything. But art doesn't always come cheap. Public television's orchestra will go as the broadcaster is revamped. Even the centerpiece of Athenian cultural life, the Athens Concert Hall, isn't guaranteed survival. That's because national arts funding has fallen by about a quarter of a billion dollars over three years. Even the National Book Center, which promotes Greek authors abroad, is to close. Greece has produced two Nobel laureates in literature and many other artists of world renown. Culture is arguably its greatest export, with benefits far beyond book and CD sales. For Greece, culture, ancient and modern, is big business, but you have to invest to collect. Greece spent $175 million on the new Acropolis Museum, now a pilgrimage for millions of people each year. But the new culture minister isn't promising new money. Money isn't everything. Of course money is necessary, but there is also the imagination. People also do things for the honour and for the joy of doing them. The love of history and culture lies deep within the soul of all Greeks. Angelagi Rook needs very little imagination to explain how she would spend her prize money. She needs to fix her house. But like many Greeks, she's decided not to dwell on what she doesn't have. John Saropoulos, Al Jazeera, Athens.